Dune. The building of a dynasty. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand One Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we're on episode 202. We have just flipped things over. Or wait, are we in? Yeah, we're on 202. I was about to say, wait, do I have the numbers correct? Um, and seeing as how we're into the 200s, I thought we could play one of the Dude. greatest sequels of all time. We've been having a real blast with sequels recently. We did Sonic, we did Mario. Now it's time for Dune. Dune takes place on the planet Arrakis, as you can see here. Now, Dune is one of the best real-time strategy games ever made because it was basically the first. There were sort of predecessors like Herzog Sway, which I never played, actually, but I've read about. And uh, I've mentioned this before, but Battletech, uh, the Crescent Hawks Revenge, which is a game I'm going to be playing in a couple of weeks. Actually, maybe more like four or five. I don't know. I don't have the exact timing down, but it will be playing that this summer. Also by Westwood Studios here, who go on to create Command and Conquer um, and inspire games like Warcraft and Starcraft. But this is the first game you could say is actually a real-time strategy game. It has all the conventions, base building, unit construction, harvesting resources, spice in this case, which the Emperor sorely wants us to harvest. So much so that he's just unleashing us on the battlefield all to murder each other over spice. Um, which no I'm going to say we're okay with that. It uh, has no Fog of War. Of it has everything. This is a real-time strategy game, guys, and I am so excited to play this. I was introduced to this arrived. game when I was what to, but a wee lad in public school. A friend of mine showed up to school one day with a 3.5-inch floppy disk. Scrawled on it said Dune 2, now, and it pretty much changed my life. So here are the three houses that are fighting for control of Dune. First, we have the Noble Atreides. The noble Atreides. Yeah, that's what I just said, lady. So noble that they're going to shoot you in the face with a machine gun. That's nobility, let me tell the you. Insidious we have uh, some Insidious Ordos. I don't know what's so insidious about firing desert rockets, but maybe there's something I don't get. And I don't know. Evil Ooh, and the Harkonnen. evil Harkonnen. Look at them. They just look evil. Ugh. Look like desert stormtroopers or something. They're about to get their comeuppance, though. They literally just get blown away. I think that guy's shoes were still standing, but he was disintegrated. Um, oh. I guess we have a one in three chance is what they're telling Your us. Battle for Doom begins. Oh, man, so epic. Now. Oh, it totally does begin right now. We're going to kick some major butt in this game. So, Dune 2, one of my favorite games. Um, we're really playing a lot of my favorites as we sort of rolled over into the 200s here. But without further ado, let's go ahead and start this game up, and I'll blather on about Westwood Studios and real-time strategy games once we get started. So these are the three houses. Um, let's just take a look at each, and we'll sort of... Uh, I'll tell you guys a little bit about each as we check them out. House so here's Atreides. House Atreides. House Atreides. Caledon, home planet of the Trades, has a warm, calm climate and the lands are lush and green. The rich soils and mild weather support extensive variety of agricultural activities. In recent centuries, industrial and technological development has added to the prosperity of the Cal Caledonian peoples. Do you wish to join House Atreides? Uh, no. So Atreides are the good guys. They're, you know, if you've ever seen the Dune movie or I think they had shows and novels and stuff, they're the good guys. But of course, being the good guys sucks. Uh, I think we did that for Command and Conquer. We were the good guys. And I regret it to this day. We should have been the bad guys. So let's check out. There's, in fact, there's two bad guys in uh, this game. House Ordos, House which is Ordos. not a canon faction in the Dune universe. It was made up, basically, for this game. The home planet of Ordos is a frigid and ice-covered world. We presume the Ordos import their agricultural and technological goods from nearby star systems. Acting as traders and brokers, the Ordos produce no physical products of their own and rely upon their merchandising skills to survive. So they're the treacherous, evil merchants with a, a snake um, as their logo. The Ordos actually kind of suck in this game. They have the weakest units. Um, and each each uh, house, each faction has a super unit, and the Ordos's super unit turns the enemies uh, against them. It basically, it converts enemies to your side, which is kind of cool, actually. Um, the Atreides have like a sonic tank; it shoots like sonic waves and like kills you with sound. 
Um, I always wondered when they fired the sonic tank if it was like just a giant sound wave or if it was like a rock opera. Or like, you know, they actually send like music or something specific um, to kill you with. That would suck. Maybe like I love you. It's like you get killed by the sound I love you from their sonic tanks. House um, Arconan. House Arconan, though, are the real badasses, and here's who we're going to be. House Arconan. From the dark world of Getty Prime, the savage House Harkonnen has spread across the universe. A cruel people, the Harkonnen are ruthless towards both friend and foe in their fanatical pursuit of power. I do wish to join House Harkonnen because they sound like the butch badasses of the universe that I wish I was. Um, now you'll notice that that woman who was giving us instructions, her eyes were glowing blue. That is not some randomness. So in the Dune universe, Dune takes place thousands of years in the future and our mentan here is gonna he's gonna tell us this is our our uh, advisor he's just sort of giving us guidance i think in this first mission we just need to harvest a lot of spice but in the deep distant future uh spice is the stuff that grows on um dune and if you eat it you get like really really long life and you can like see the future and they use it for therefore jumping like plotting courses to jump starships across stars and stuff so it's a very valuable thing um but it is very treacherous to get because uh dune is like this wasteland of a desert and it's also filled with sandworms a la beetlejuice that will just eat anything that like uh, decides to like roam around in the sand so it's very dangerous but very important and if you eat too much spice your eyes turn blue so that's why i'm talking about spice right now anyway blah 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 baldy oh look his Oh, I thought his eyes followed the mouse. Oh, wait, they do! That's so cool! Do they? Or maybe they don't. They kind of do. Huh, that's weird. Okay, he's aware of us, guys. Let's just proceed. So here we go, the world of Dune. Now, what you're supposed to do is build these, like, concrete blocks. Um, and they take a while to build. And... You use them as a foundation for other buildings. So if you build stuff just on the gravel here, you can't build on sand, by the way. And this is spice over here. But if you, oh, hold on, we gotta adjust this. Auto scroll, game speed. Wait, auto scroll is on? Oh, it's just very slow. Oh, you have to scroll like this. The edge of the screen doesn't work, okay. Um, anyway, if you just build on the gravel, your buildings come in like slightly damaged. But the reality is that it takes too long to build the uh, build the concrete slab, so we're just totally going to skip it in our little playthrough here. Um, it's a leap strategy. You know, the computer in this game is notoriously kind of dumb, but it's also pretty fun. So, I like the voice the voice notifications too. Enemy unit approaching from the north. Um, now, when we do eventually go and play Battletech, you will see that the that the vocal notifications uh, that are in this game kind of have their start in Battletech, actually. So Westwood, oh, it's easier to scroll with the arrow keys, by the way, so I'm just gonna be doing that. Westwood Studios here. Um, oh, that guy just walked into our construction yard. He suicide bombed us. And see, we could repair this building if we want now. See how damaged things come in? That's because we didn't build it on slabs. If we had built four slabs here and then built this, it would have come into full power. We're not gonna do that though, because we're we're too impatient for all that. Oh, we're in the upper corner of the map here. Um, so we built a refinery. Our harvester just got dropped off by air, and then it will go around and pick up spice. And so this first mission is basically just like spice harvesting. There's more spice fields up here. Let's just go ahead and explore the whole map. Because we want to know where all the good spicy yes, parts of the world are. This is a very spicy Urban game. Reporting. I wonder what spice tastes like. Does it taste good or is it like, you know, you only eat yes, it because sir. it'll help you Urban live out. longer, but it's not actually good. Reporting. Okay, here's something fun you can do. You can straight up run these guys over. So if we reporting. come back over here. Acknowledged. The harvester has the power to... This reporting. can't. Tanks reporting. later on in the game can. So we're going to totally run these guys over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they gave like a little screen there. Um, anyway, as I was saying, um, so Westwood Studios, they were developing games before Dune, and one of the games that they developed is a game called Battletech Revenge of the Crescent Hawks, which is one of my favorite games. And actually, I was a Kickstarter of the Battletech, uh, the Battletech um, Kickstarter game that uh, sort of went viral a little while ago. And oh, what are these guys doing? And I uh, am totally looking forward to that game coming out. 
Yes, sir. Um, oh god, get away from me! Moving out. Maybe I think we got to call back one of these guys. I'm, I'm getting like all kerfuffled. I'm trying to talk about too Reporting. many things at once. But the BattleTech Kickstarter game Affirmative. looks like it's going to be awesome. Yes, I'm a big fan of BattleTech. And uh, Westwood Studios here made a BattleTech game before they made Dune. And some Reporting. of the things in that game, basically, if you go and play that Reporting. game, you can sort of see where they got inspiration from Dune for Dune 2. Not all yes, of it. Sir. Definitely Dune 2 was inspired by many other things, too. But the Crescent Hawks is Move kind now. of like a proto real-time strategy game. It has some of the elements yes, that sir. would appear in Move later real-time strategy games. Man, they suck. There was three of them, yes, and I sir. killed two of them. Oh no! Reporting. Attack no. him! Save me! Yes, sir. Save the evil trooper! He has so much more evil yes, he sir. wants to do on the world. Save him, Reporting. quad! Enemy unit destroyed. Enemy unit destroyed. The voice, the voice uh, stuff in this game is pretty awesome too. So this is a very Reporting. tiny map, as you can see. And we're gonna go up here too. So anyway, yeah, uh, Dune, Dune 2 here had a lot of inspirations, and it didn't sort of come out of nowhere. Westwood had kind of laid the ground for Dune 2 before they ever got to Dune 2 by experimenting with this type of gameplay um, before. But uh, but nonetheless, it's a great achievement. Reporting. And it, it was so influential, like it spawned a genre. Like after Dune 2, real-time strategy games became a thing. And they were they were huge for a little while there. Enemy unit approaching um, from the enemy west. Unit from the west. Oh, hello. It says enemy unit approaching, but really I'm approaching them. So okay, we're getting more money here. What is our goal, by the way? Oh, we can't even find out. Pick another house. Just straight up, uh, leave your uh, leave your allegiance so we can see briefing. Uh, give me orders. Uh, able to assist. Convert refinery into credits. Okay, just earn credits, I guess. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's build one more of these. Because that will speed things up. That will make our life easier. I think we're also, like, maxing out in how much money we we have. Enemy unit destroyed. So, uh, in Command and & Conquer and Dune 2... Um, each of these refineries can only hold a thousand spice, yeah. It's always kind of an interesting mechanic, I thought. Command & Conquer had the same mechanic, so... Um, when you build your refineries, it tells you what like your max amount of money actually is. And if you don't have enough refineries, but you keep refining more stuff, you keep harvesting more spice, then what can actually happen is... Um, is you can you can just waste money. Reporting. It's kind of weird. They never did that in StarCraft. It's not like in StarCraft or WarCraft, there was like a limit on how much money you could actually build up in your bank. But those guys are just yes, they just want to die. They just have a death wish. Let's give it to them with a rocket to the face. Yes, sir. Our evil evil Harkonnen troopers. So we'll build down here. So I did that so that I could move diagonally through my base like this. And the harvester primitive. is smart enough to get uh, to get spice. There is uh, there's very Big primitive knowledge. AI in this game. An interesting bit of trivia is that the AI in this game is actually more sophisticated than it could be more sophisticated than it is. I guess I should say. So basically, the AI was programmed to be smarter than it is in the final Big game. Well, let's just straight up run these guys over. Big How knowledge. dare you attack our Gronin harvester? <laughs> <laughs> and we did, and we start harvesting them. There's gonna be some ground up body parts in this uh, in this batch of spice. Everyone just ignore it. Oh god, it'd be like finding a finger in a hot dog. It's like the last time you ever eat a hot dog. I don't know if anyone's ever actually found a finger in a hot dog. I hope not. That's gross. So let's go ahead and finish exploring here. So this game, as you can see, does not have persistent fog of war. So fog of war was something that Dune 2, I believe it's something they added or they at least sort of uh, innovated. Oh, look, there's there's multiple guys over here. Reporting. I think we can just beast mode it through these guys. Um, but it does have sort of persistent, like once you explore an area of the map, it's explored. Um, Command and Conquer had this same thing too, and always a fun strategy when you're playing against your friends in Command and Conquer 
was early on in the game just to like run a unit into their base just to explore and see what's there. And then for the rest of the game, you could just see their whole base and you could like launch nukes and stuff at them. It's pretty awesome. Oh no, I'm smoking! Kill them! Kill the dirty, stinking infantry. In fact, go ahead and hit them with a rocket. Oh, that guy took a bazooka! Oh, there's more guys! Oh no! Run! Run, Harkona! We can't have any casualties! No, move over here. We need double quads on this. Oh, we successfully completed our mission! You have pleased me. There's all the enemies surrendering in the desert to our superior stormtroopers. Continue to serve me well, and I will see to it that you are rewarded. Why, well, thank you, creepy old bald man. There's nothing more that I want in life than to satisfy creepy old bald men. I'm gonna go ahead and proceed. We have attained the rank of Desert Mongoose. Is that an official army rank? That is, that is awesome, though. That is the Desert Mongoose. I would like that to be my nickname. J... Jay the Mongoose. Oh, what the? Look, there's so much room. Why can't I type? I hate when they do this on high score screens where, like, they don't let you... Oh, it, it added it for me. Okay. But I was going to say, there was so much empty space. I hate it in high score screens when they, like, limit your name to be very short. I guess here they were uh, they were doing what I was thinking of doing, which is adding the Desert Mongoose moniker, so I knew it was up. All right. On to the next mission. So here's a really cool part of the game. Between missions, you actually get to select what piece of land you want to invade. And by the way, I haven't said it already, but the music in this game is awesome. Like, I am instantly transported back to my childhood, my, my childhood of DOS gaming, uh, my addiction to DOS gaming as a kid, just by listening to this music. Uh, this game, XCOM... Um, there's a handful of other games that just have, like, music that's so awesome that, like, you just can't help but love it. Okay, do we want to go here, here, or here? We really have... The one thing I never liked about Command & Conquer and Dune 2 is, like, it's like, yeah, you get to choose what spot to go to, but it's not like you have any idea what's awaiting you here. It's pretty much random. Um, let's go ahead and try and, like, flank them, though. Let's try and do something interesting rather than just going into the mix. We're going to go up over here. Now, when we do beat this mission, all three of those territories come to us. So it's like, it's kind of interesting that they tried to add... No, oh, there's a traitor among us. It's not me. Oh, they're in even questioning me. What the hell? I just said it wasn't me. But uh, that, that overhead map screen could have actually had a lot more tactical purpose to the game. It's a shame they actually didn't sort of carry that idea forward. But it could have been cool if, like, there were different types of missions on the different uh, zones. And you got to pick the one you wanted. And, like, maybe one of the other missions would be successful. But, um, oh, hello. Okay, ancient copy protection. Well, I happen to know that it's 72 kilometers per hour. Correct! You are truly loyal to House Harkonnen. I'm loyal because I happen to know how fast a trike was. Alrighty. 72. I guess that's pretty fast. House Harkonnen has generously granted you a new opportunity to serve us. We will now allow you to take command in a more dangerous area and, accumulated tw and accumulate 2,700 credits. Although so worthless Atreides you may encounter in this region should always be eliminator. eliminated. <laughs> oh, okay, just maybe if you want to kill the Atreides, go for it. But like, you know, we don't really have a lot of like you know, opinion about the matter. Okay. Let's go ahead and get this going. There isn't enough land to place your uh, your power. Don't worry. It's all gonna work out. Affirmative. I don't care about I don't care about proper spacing of things. Right, go over here. I remember as a kid that, that these maps were way bigger than they actually are, actually, I think. Like, playing as an adult now, I'm like, wow, these are quite small. Like, having played modern uh, real-time strategy games. But I think it is the case... I mean, it definitely is... Oh, damn it. <laughs> it is the case maps get bigger later on. Okay, one of my trikes just fell into a hole, and it exploded a bunch of spice all over here, but we lost... Or it's not a trike, it's like a quad. We lost a quad. That sucks. Reporting. So spice... I, I don't know if they're called Reporting. spice balloons or spice balloons. But either way, um, we just lost a... We just lost a trike. He died in the it service to House Harkonnen. From the north. Basically by falling into a hole. The most noble way to go. The yeah, enemy's approaching from the north. Acknowledge. Okay, you might as well kill him. Might as well kill him. Let's not waste any opportunity to kill the treacherous 
Atreides. Now these are cool. These are like rocks that your soldiers can stand on. And if like an enemy tank shows up, it can't run you over because it can't get up on the rocks. So it's kind of like a mountain pass. It's actually pretty damn convenient. It'll keep our guys safe. Now, we're gonna build one harvester thing over here. Let's go like this. Okay. And then, the one thing you did use these little platforms for is to, like, expand your base. Oh, there's a, there's a trike. Might as well kill it. Two on one. A quad can take a trike, but two quads can own a, tr a, a trike. Like, there's no contest. Now, the one thing you did use these little, uh, these little, uh, concrete blocks for is to, like, expand where you could build your base. Because I kind of want to build it over here. Um... And because you can only build on adjacent tiles to where you've already built, you can build these things like this. And then I should be able to, that should be far enough. I should be able to build this. Now later on, you get your command centers, your construction yards here, get the ability to build four tiles of the concrete at once. And when that happens, then that kind of opens up. Then I actually do start building uh, concrete. But in these early levels, like it honestly does not matter at all. Hey, what the hell? Those guys just totally walked right by all of our guards. Get over here, you, you traitors. No, you you blew up the fucking concrete. You dicks. Oh, well. Well, we'll build, uh, let's build it like that. I don't know. Where are you going? Fight to the last man, dammit. Acknowledged. No cowards allowed in the Harkonnen army. That's not the way of the Harkonnen. I wonder if they have a base yet. So one other thing you could build is a radar outpost, which would basically like show you the terrain on the minimap. I'm not gonna do that yet. Warning. Oh look, there's a spice balloon. Oh, and they do have a base. Okay. Um, actually, that is not good. We might have just lured them all over to our base. Let's see. I'm gonna hang out near the spice balloon, so if they try to attack me, they're gonna go in. Oh, yeah. There, they be coming for me. Can I build a vehicle factory yet? We gotta get down here and, like, concentrate our, like, firepower. See if we can, like, lure one of these guys over here. Ah, uh, seems like they're turning back. Okay, they have a small outpost. Oh, they can build soldiers, though. Which is a pain to us. Enemy unit Soldiers are real pain in the butt. I guess we could just run them over with our harvester eternally. But... Oh, look. We're going to get these guys to walk into the... They're going to fall in and boom. Kill them. So we use terrain to our advantage. Man, they're just coming to the slaughter. Let's get down here. They really want to kill that one quad. Okay, once we build this last refinery, we should be good. These early missions are all just sort of like, eh, harvest some spice. Just basically, it's like uh, an old DOS version of Farm Farmville. Man, this terrain here is like chewed up. Just f it's like nothing but rocket holes. So I guess if you build the concrete, you can build like roads around your bridge, and uh, your units will actually move faster on the concrete. But oh, I wish I could put it like right there. Oh well, let's just do that. Whatever. It, it really doesn't matter. Now, the AI does have a few exploits in this game. Like, I think it will always attack your upper leftmost building. And sometimes the harvesters don't do anything after they deploy, so you have to manually make sure they're all always working. 2,700. So, pretty much once these other two harvesters come back, we'll be done. I think that's how it works. Because each harvester, I think, brings in a thousand every time it returns. So we should be good. Insufficient power, wind traps is needed. When your power output does not match how much you need, your buildings also slowly decay. But that's okay. We're just gonna let. We're just. We're living in squalor. We're gonna let our base slowly be destroyed. Hey, what? What are they doing? Oh, jeez! They like suicided into the building. Attack. Like hardcore. Wow. Okay. Reporting. 
Well, again, we can take that damage. Now, we're not at the level yet where sandworms appear, but sandworms are coming, trust me. And they are awesome. So, Arrakis, this planet here, is littered with sandworms. And I believe when the sandworms die, they turn into spice or something like that. So, that's sort of the, the lore where the spice comes from. Dune 2 here has a lot of... It's a really cool sci-fi property. It has a lot of interesting um, stuff going on with it. Moving out. Oh, we're actually, like, destroying the spice as we kill these guys? Oh, well, we don't need that much spice. Reporting. Better to kill Atreides than to get an extra hundred in spice, I guess. Enemy unit destroyed. Sucker. I guess after Dune 2, Warning. Westwood decided, you know, we had, we've had we licensed the Battletech uh, license for Crescent Hawk's Revenge. We've licensed Dune 2 to create the real-time strategy genre. We're done with licensing. We're going to create our own sci-fi universe, and that's sort of where Command & Conquer ended up coming from, which is a great game. Um, and I played it, I think it was like the seventh or like ninth episode I ever played for this series. Just pretty crazy. Like speaking of like being in the 200s now, um, we have come a long way and we still have so much more to go, you know? Like there's so many games left to play. Um, it's pretty mind blowing. Man, these guys are determined. They got like one shot off before they died. Destroyed. So, what you basically end up doing in this game, in the later levels especially, is you just line up a bunch of units like this, and enemies come like one at a time, and you just basically like decimate them um, like this, so that they pretty much do no damage, and you just wait it out, and then at some point you just decide to like bum rush the enemy and like wipe them out that way. So that's destroyed. like how you kill them. The earlier missions are actually harder, I think, than the later missions, because in the earlier missions, you just have these, Reporting. like, crappy Reporting. things, Reporting. like the little Reporting. quads and trikes, Reporting. and they honestly don't do a lot of damage to buildings, but uh, I think in the next mission or two, we have to start destroying a trade -E bases, and then things get very complicated because it's sort of like, well, I mean, Enemy the, the enemies aren't very tough, but neither are your units, and it can actually be really hard to destroy a base. Later on, when we get tanks and, and rocket launchers and stuff, bases go down like nothing. And you can like fly through a level pretty damn quickly. But early on, um, it, it can be quite rough. Okay, I think this is it. I think we got it. So we can hold 3,000. We only need 2,700. And they're all pumping, pumping spice into the refinery. Getting a steady flow of credits, galactic one credits. Enemy unit approaching from the yeah, north. I like how it warns us about the one guy. Crescent Revenge does this too. There's always like, Commander, Our warning, red alert, enemy deployed. sighted and stuff. Although in Crescent Revenge, it kind of pauses warning. the game when that happens. I am, by the way, so excited to play that, that game. It is one of my favorite games of all time. It's going to be part of my Saturday afternoon gaming series because it is not an official uh, game in the book, a thousand and one games you'll play before you die, but it should be, honestly. Um, as I was saying, I'm a huge Battletech fan. I, I helped sponsor the Kickstarter, um, which I think should be live by the time this video goes uh, goes up, like the, the backer beta. So maybe I'll play that for my series at some point, um, or maybe we'll just play it for fun. I don't know. But we've completed our mission. You've again pleased me. What's happening on the battlefield? They're like cleaning up garbage. You remind me of myself and my youth. Oh god, this is my future then, eh? This does not bode well. May indeed have true Harkonnen blood. Who am I then? If they don't think I'm a Harkonnen. Am I some guy trying to like earn allegiance to the Harkonnen? Like, I'm just like the biggest Harkonnen fanboy and I showed up. What? How did the enemy harvest more spice than me? I had three harvesters pumping that stuff out. Didn't lose a single warrior though. I'm Jay the Caring, which is a very unusual trait in a Harkonnen army. Alright, let's go ahead and do this. Let's see what, what happened in the other two zones. Ah, victory! So it didn't matter which zone we picked, we were always going to take those three. Oh man, the Ordos kind of got screwed there. Although they did take... they took four territories, but they lost three. So they came out one ahead. And the Atreides took... So the Atreides really won in that deal. Huh. Okay. Three zones to pick. Let's go with this one. Let's... Because I feel like this one... We, we Now we want to get into the battles. Enough of this harvesting spice crap. Let's, let's rock some enemies. Rock them to the core. 
The despised Ordos are well established in this region, and are harvesting spice that should rightfully belong to House Arconan. Destroy the Ordos installation in this area and assert your control in the name of House Harkonnen. Glory be to the Harkonnen. Let's do this. So I guess the idea with uh, Dune here, by the way. Okay, let's actually build some of these things. You guys can see how, how slow and tedious it is. Yes, out. We'll actually build these yes, because at least for our power out. plant, we don't want our power yes, plant to, to show up damaged. But that's how long it takes, basically. Um, actually, we want our power to be in the upper left corner. Warning. Oh shoot! Okay, the sandworms are here finally. Oh, it's down here too. So you can see it. If I were to walk a unit onto the land, uh, it could get eaten. And the real sucky thing about sandworms is most of your units can just hide here on the gravel, except for harvesters. And yes, they do eat harvesters. It is the saddest thing in the world when a heart when a sandworm shows up and just monches down a harvester in one bite. <laughs> I mean, first of all, that can't that can't contain many nutrients or anything for the sandworm. It can't be good for its digestive yes. tract to just straight up Moving eat out. a vehicle. And second of Moving all, out. it sucks Reporting. because like now you're down a harvester, Reporting. and if you no. lose all your harvesters, you can sort of get marooned where you have no money and stuff. So it's actually it's it's not a it's not a trivial problem. Okay, now we have a radar. Reporting. Or a uh, wind trap. It's all wind power. Very green on Arrakis. It's not a nuclear plant or something. It's like we run on the power of wind. The power of hopes and prayers. Hmm. I kind of wish that I had built another slab, to be honest with you. So, okay, there seems to be a lot of spice over here. So, we're going to build one more. One more refinery. I always like to go like mass refinery so I have lots of resources. And then like you end up having so much money you can just pump units out like crazy. One more refinery. Nothing but refineries. This is my early training was nothing. They didn't train me how to fight. They just trained me how to harvest spice. So I'm really just kind of reverting back to that. Keep the scouting going. We're nothing if not a very curious people. We're a curious warlord. Acknowledged. Um, sandworms are such a cool idea. Do you guys remember the sandworms in Beetlejuice? Um, I I loved Beetlejuice as a kid. That movie was freaking amazing. Just so many like weird elements that like combine together in like such a right way. Like uh, Delia's art being alive and being like all freaky and stuff. I don't know. Great game or great. Uh, I was gonna say great game. Beetlejuice did have a video game. It was an NES game. And it was not great, but uh, great movie at least. I think they're still like firing at that sandworm. You think the worm would get a hint and like be like, okay, I guess I won't hang around here. But like, definitely, we never want to harvest down here. We'll just get eaten. Um, I think it is the case that after a sandworm eats someone, it goes away for a little bit. But I definitely have seen a sandworm eat like two or three units in a row. So it can decimate an army. Really, what we want is to lure the enemy onto the sand and have them get eaten. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the sandworms and beetles were totally awesome. And Beetlejuice just had so many cool, Recording. neat elements to it. Um, Affirmative. Such a fascinating movie. They don't make movies like that anymore. Or maybe they do. I don't know. Affirmative. I always wonder, like, if I'm getting out of touch with, like, movies that, like, kids like these days. Where Recording. I'm like, ah, oh, there's Recording. nothing like Beetlejuice. Meanwhile, kids are like, but have you ever watched Gravity Falls? I'm like, what is that? I've never watched it. And I, in fact, haven't watched Warning. Gravity Falls. But I've... I've heard some some things that make me think maybe it's worth watching. I don't know. Um, later on in the game, by the way, you get mobile construction vehicles, and you can actually, like, hop to other islands of gravel here. So, yeah, like, kind of marooned on this. Oh, what the hell? They're dropping units off at our base. Bull! How dare you? We got to kill these dudes. But uh, don't go on the sand, whatever you do. There we go. They did a bit of damage to us, but I'm still not ready to repair. Maybe if something gets in the red, I will actually repair. All right, we are good in terms of refineries. Now, wait, what is this? Are we getting a cargo drop off? It went into the dark and never came back. Hey, we're just a free unit. 
They were like, hey, by the way, I heard you like trikes, so here's a trike. Uh, another cool thing about later in the game is that you can get uh, those, the, the like aircraft that are flying around that dropped off units to us. You can actually buy some of those later on, and they will pick up and drop off your harvester. And so it makes harvesting spice like a lot more pleasant. Because uh, you don't have to wait for these things. They're slow as anything. You don't have to wait for them to like gradually like uh, move around the map. Warning, worm sign. Okay, where's that worm? Construction. As long as he's down there. If he ever shows up up where my uh, harvesters are, I gotta like run fast. Oh, no. No, 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 no. You see the worm that they're trying to fight there? Why would you think that is a good place to harvest spice? You're an idiot. Harvest way over there. If you must. So we're gonna do this. Oh, shoot. The worm, he's coming up. He figured out a way around the, the thing. Hopefully he does not eat a harvester. Oh god. This is how things go really bad for us. Because... Were there, are there two worms? Is there another one down here? Huh. This is our radar dish. It's gonna unlock some stuff for us. I think you need it for more advanced tech. Hmm. Eh, whatever. Like that. There we go. Pretty cool little animation there for the radar. There are two sandworms. There's one down here and one... They show up as white on the radar. See, there's one there. There's also like one right around here. Which is bull. Because if he eats one of our harvesters, we're screwed. <laughs> okay, so we have the war facility for building troopers. Or we can build vehicles. When I was a kid, I would just mash the whole base together and I wouldn't put any space between anything. But you really need this space, I think. Reporting. I'm much better at base building as an adult. I don't want to brag, but I, I've... I've played my share of real-time strategy games to know that you're gonna want to leave some space in your base. Oh, hello. Dirty, dirty Ordos. Let's see if we can engage him where he stays on the sand. No, we can't. We could have had the sand room eat him. Oh, they're dropping more units off. What the hell is this, man? This is cheap. Where are my freebies? My base is under attack. I feel like the construction blocks were unnecessary. Construction. They even kept it in the Dune 2000 remake, though. So this game did get like a modernization. They basically kind of took it and took like the Red Alert 2 engine almost. And okay, we'll build these guys. They're nice and cheap. And then they uh, and they sort of like threw a, a code of Dune 2 on top of it. And it was a pretty good game. Um. I think I prefer this one over the remake, but it was like it was like a decent game. Uh, but that said, they even kept the construct the like the fact that you had to build uh, had to build the concrete blocks in that version of the game too. So it's like you you thought you were gonna get away with not having to build the blocks. No, you, you were wrong. Destroy. I want to see someone get eaten by the worm. Oh, you you dick. You are gonna do this, aren't you? stand right in the way of where I wanted to build my my vehicle factory. Okay, well how about we build it right here instead? I think those guys are going to attack it immediately. Yeah, they are. Oh no, they're going to go around it. Okay. Um, another cool thing about this game is you can actually um, order units from a starport. So, you don't have to... You don't have to build units, you can sort of fly them in. And what's really cool about the starport is like the price for units varies. So it's kind of like looking for, for like items on eBay. It's like sometimes you'll find a deal and they'll be cheap. And so like when harvesters and stuff are cheap, you may just be like, oh shoot, I'm just gonna buy a ton of harvesters because like they're on sale. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know, I can't think of any other game that, that does that, but it's pretty cool. Oh shoot, get off, get off the, the sand, you're gonna get eaten by a worm. It's like the opposite of a tequila worm. Have you ever seen a worm that can eat you? Because normally people eat the tequila worm. That, I've always thought that was disgusting. The idea that there is a worm in my alcohol. I don't care that it's soaked in alcohol and that if you eat it, it's like supposed to like get you really messed up because it's just like a dead worm that's been soaking up alcohol for so long. I don't want to eat a worm. How about that? How about I don't eat a worm? <laughs> I feel like I can bring a lot of these guys to the front because they're not really doing anything in the back. 
In fact, did we get more reinforcements? Because I don't remember all these guys being back there. Um, and so once we max out in units here, we'll try and like take the fight to the enemy and really like mess them up. We have like a lot. We have a lot of guys actually. Let's see what's going on with the worm over here. He's just hanging around. I wonder if these two worms know each other. Like, are they old? Are they old buddies? The old war buddies? Do they talk about the things that they've eaten? Trade eating stories. All right, we got we got a lot of these dudes. Oh yeah, I forgot about this. Oh, it takes so long to build. <laughs> There's 21 soldiers. It's a pretty big force. I think we're almost maxed out. I forget what the upper limit is in terms of units, but we're getting there. Okay, let's let's find out where this enemy is. Let's send the qua or the, the trike. Hopefully he doesn't get eaten by the worm. Make sure whatever you do, Trike, avoid the worm. Trike is one of the fastest... I think it's the fastest unit in the game. So this is what the fastest unit in the game looks like. I know it's not super impressive, but... I think if I think if it stops, if we get it to stop, then it's... Yeah, it's view expands. So these, these light units have really crappy uh, fields of view. Like, this guy must literally be blind. That's as far as he can see. Later on, you get rocket launchers and stuff. They have a much wider line of sight. So even though they are slower, it's better to scout with them almost. Oh, yeah, let's see how long this guy lasts. Boom, boom. Well, he's not going to last long, but it's still not like an impressively quick time to kill him. Where's the worm when you need him? There's two there's two bikes on the, the sand, man. Where are you? Where are you, wormy? You're missing out on a free meal, buddy. Oh, hello. There's a lot of them. I think we might have found the base. Go, 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 go before they destroy you. We must be right in here. We're, we must be so close. Okay, we're, we're to we've totally found the base, sort of. If I can find a building. What are all you guys doing hanging out in the desert? Where is... Where do you sleep at night? Oh, there it is. There is a building. Okay, we know where they are. This guy's sacrifice will not be in vain. And you know what? Recording. Let's let's start the Recording. let's start the craziness. I don't know if we're gonna have enough soldiers to actually like do this in a timely manner. Fight them! Oh, what are you guys doing? Get get in the mix. Get in the fray. All right. Well, we are definitely in a battle. Whether or not we're gonna no. win it, who's to say? Our oh! Units oh! Our when did that happen? Oh no! Um, okay, forget about that. We need we need to be able to build vehicles again. That's very problematic. I did not even realize that was happening. I had the money to repair it too. Hmm. Where are they all coming from, man? Where are all these units coming from? What they had just had a bunch of soldiers hanging out in the desert? All right, I, I feel like we've, we've stabilized the battle a little bit. So I've got my guys here on the ridge trying to decimate the enemy uh, with their rockets. Jesus, look at all their soldiers. What the hell? That is insane. How many soldiers can you possibly have? How did, how did this battle get away from us? I'm like legit considering bringing this harvester into combat. All right, let's do it. We're gonna have a we're gonna have a combat harvester just to run over all the damned infantry, since they pump them out like it's no one's business. It's crazy. So as you can see, I have like uh, a whole bunch of quads being produced, non-stop quads, because like I don't know, they're they're being like insanely difficult here. Like they're overrunning. I I I, I retreated back here to try and form a line of quads and rocket guys, and they're even getting through that. Like, it's insane. They've got to be running out of money. There's no way. They only have one refinery. I have four. The computer cheats, I tell you. Seriously, this is this has got to work. Here here comes our combat harvester. Squish them all! Send them all to, to hell! Yes! Okay, this is a way better way to fight the enemy. Go up here, squish these guys. Enemy there we go. There, how about that? Try building another another fleet of soldiers now. I could even harvest some spice and then go home if I wanted. Maybe this guy should harvest and then go home, because he's gonna die. You did your duty, sir. You killed like four or five squads of enemies. Don't go far though, just in case we need you. One thing you can do is totally surround a building so that uh, when it goes to spawn an uh, enemy, there's like actually no room for it. 
which is pretty awesome. Alright, is this gonna work now? Like, it seems like we've overwhelmed the enemy here. Feels like there's no way he could legit be surviving this. There we go, we're about to destroy buildings, finally! You stinking Ordos, try building more soldiers now. Now they're screwed. They're very dependent on the soldier tactics. Alright, so I don't know how that first battle went so bad for us, but we kind of pulled it together since. Now, now they're basically done. Just destroyed their radar dish. Keep it going. Advance! Advance, troops! Oh, we gotta watch out for their harvester. It might try and run us over. Maybe they learned a thing or two from the treacherous Harkonnen. Even though it's the Ordos who are supposed to be treacherous. I feel like really we are, though. Oh, I have no money. What happened? Oh, these guys aren't working. It's a worker's strike. What the hell? What the? We just lost power. Oh, because <laughs> our base is slowly in decline. We gotta kill this light factory. As long as it stands, we're just gonna keep building more guys. They'll, like, literally never go down. See what I mean about these early levels? Like, honestly, the, the weapons I've got do so little damage that it takes forever to actually, like... Uh, kill the enemy base. If we were on the later levels, I think we would have made significant progress by now. How is the factory still standing? Kill factory! Get over there! Oh my god. We were at we were at this stage before and it actually did not die. So if you guys could actually kill it this time. There we go. That one harvester, he's just going through the motions now. He knows he's done for. They're like still trying to repair the silo. Just go down! This is one annoying thing I always found about the game, because like, you don't need to have like a peon or anything standing near your building to repair, like in Warcraft, so you can just click on repair. And so buildings have this like constantly regenerating health bar. It's really annoying. <laughs> like it's healing faster than we can damage it. Die already! Yeah. Well, basically, we've already passed this mission. So, guys, it's taken me quite a while, actually, to go through this third mission here. I do want to go through, like, at least another mission or two. So, we're going to have a follow-up part to this. So, guys, if you've been enjoying this video, uh, if you've been enjoying checking out Dune 2 here, go ahead, like the video, subscribe to the channel. I will be back in a couple days with a part two here so we can get a little further in this game. And actually, you know what I'm going to do? Maybe I'll skip a level or two so that when you guys meet me again, we can have some more advanced units because that'll be fun. Um, but until next time, my friends, remember, if you're in a war for spice, anything goes. Anyway, until next time, my friends, take care of yourselves, and peace. Enemy structure destroyed. Enemy structure destroyed. They are so confident, they are literally harvesting right in front of my army. Right in front of my army.